night. Welcome everybody. It's Chris Petrie. Thanks we're, we're, for coming by. We're, we're doing another Extreme Beginners uh, video series here. We're doing a beautiful bridge, a brownstone bridge in the beautiful countryside with mountains, some purple mountains in the background. We have a gorgeous brownstone bridge here with uh, some beautiful warm tones of browns and grays and purples. We have a river coming through the bridge here, beautiful reflections of the trees down into the water. We're going to do all this on this video and you're going to see how easy it is, how it's just a basic um, process of just kind of the simplicity of mixing colors first in your palette so that you have all your colors mixed for your painting beforehand, before you start, even before you start painting you're going to mix all your colors first. We're going to show you how exactly how to do that. We're going to cover each color you need to do and how to put it in each of the pans of the palette. And we also cover how this is a beginner's palette. Prang Oval 16 palettes are very inexpensive, so if you're just starting out and it's your first time here, welcome. I'm really happy you're coming by, and if you're making a start with watercolor, you haven't um, you couldn't find a better place to start here than on my channel because I'm covering all the Extreme Beginners series paintings and I have already dozens of paintings that are um, labeled Extreme Beginners on YouTube. So you can just type in Extreme Beginners anytime you want on YouTube and you'll find all my videos. And there's literally dozens of them. And you can start out by doing all the previous videos I've created as well as working with this one which is a fantastic uh, painting which you can do very simply. Okay, so we're using the Oval 16 palette. It's inexpensive, maybe $10 or $15. You can get this online or in a hobby store. We cover the brushes here, nothing fancy. You have some uh, Princeton Art and Brush Company brushes. They come in like a five pack and you get like a couple square brushes like this. You get a couple round brushes in the pack like this. And also too, this paint set the Oval 16, Prang Oval 16, comes with a round brush like this. So you get a round brush right off the bat if you buy this paint uh, paint kit, this palette. Um, if you just buy this palette with this brush, you might not be able to do a large painting like this with this size brush. You might need to start out with a very, very small painting first for a few paintings. Maybe a, for your first couple months, you start out with really small tiny paintings with this brush. Then you, you know, eventually you might want to invest. You get these larger brushes and then you're, you're set. You can do larger paintings like this. This is a 9 by 14 painting. So let's just take a look at what we did here. We again talked about we mixed all our colors first in our palette and then we sketched first our painting lightly to get everything in the place we wanted it to, our bridge. We talked about not getting trapped with the half and half trap which is taking your painting and dividing it in half and almost making it look like two different paintings, one up top and one on bottom. So you always want to keep your mountains or your hills or your ocean up high, about three quarters of the way up or a little bit lower. So you either want to have a large sky or a small sky. You don't want to split your paper right in the half down the middle. So we covered all that. That's called the half and half, and half trap. And I did a little quick sketch here in the video, right in the beginning, you'll see I cover the half and half trap, which is a really something that really it kind of befuddles a lot of watercolor artists or artists in general. And I sometimes too forget myself, and I sometimes have that issue pro problem where I do split my paper right in the middle, which I try not to do. But this, I'm going to mention it. Really, it's really important not to do that. So, but you're the artist. If you like a certain look and you want to split your paper in half, you can do it too. It's up to you, but I think most artists will agree it does look better if you can break up your painting and not divide it right in the middle with anything that looks like it's splitting your uh, your painting in half. Okay, that's all it is. Very simple. And uh, again, we're going to cover all the steps, how to get this painting done. We're going to have a fun time doing it. I'll explain all the processes and steps and techniques that we'll use to do this painting. Okay, so we'll be right back. We'll start out with our really, really light sketch. Then we'll go over with a darker drawing, and then we'll mix up our paints and we'll paint. And you'll see how the whole process works as we go through. Okay, we'll start up in just a second. Be right back. Chris Petri here. Welcome, everybody. We're getting started here on another Extreme Beginner Series video tutorial. We're going to have an enjoyable time. We're going to have lots of um, time to do free, um, 
fun brush strokes and washes on this painting. You just saw the finished uh, painting, so um, that's kind of like if you enjoy that kind of a look of a beautiful bridge somewhere where there's some gorgeous water, rivers, um, areas where there might be ocean, coastal areas, mountains, trees, this is the painting for you. So in this painting, the, the most important thing is we're going to have a fun time doing um, a kind of a free sketch and a lot of um, enjoyable washes where we're not going to get too bogged down with really a lot of, I don't know, intricate brush strokes or anything. We're just going to have a fun time, get the washes on the paper and let everything else just fall into place. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get started here. So um, first thing we'll do is we'll get our We'll get our idea of we're creating a bridge, a stone bridge with arches along a waterway and some trees and some distant mountains. Let's um, make a decision and say we're, we want to avoid the half and half trap. Does everyone know what the half and half trap is? Let's take a look. Just a quick second. I don't want to get caught up, get caught up with doing too much techniques and theories and things like that, but there is a thing called the half and half trap and I want you to know about it so you don't fall into it. Does that make sense? I'm trying to kind of hoping that you won't, you'll avoid falling into the half and half trap and I sometimes fall into it too. Hopefully the least amount of times as possible. <laughs> so let's just take a quick, this is the half and half trap. You have your rectangle, which is your painting, right? Your your uh, composition, this is your your rectangle you're working within, you know, you have it taped off or you have your pencil liner and this is your painting, right? It tends to be that most, probably 80% or 90% of all professional artists as well as art critics, people that purchase art at a high level that go around and they, they seek out very expensive paintings and they're looking for the best paintings possible for the money and they're trying to buy maybe multi-million dollar paintings. This would be the highest level, uh, scru scrutinizing the highest level um, concepts that you can have as an artist. So you're kind of getting it right here now on my video. I'm just kind of making this point that most times if you divide your painting in half like this, that is not going to be as pleasing and pleasant and enjoyable um, to look at versus if you divide it maybe a little bit above that halfway point or a little bit, let's say, above that. Let's say for this point, like right here. If you can keep your compositions, whatever it might be in here, we're gonna, here you just saw the finished painting. We did a beautiful, beautiful bridge and some mountains and some water. We want to keep... We want to avoid dividing that rectangle that we're working within our painting in half, like splitting it in half so that it's divided exactly in half. So you're always better going either halfway, uh, above halfway or below halfway. So you could do this and say, okay, here's another example. In this example, here's the half halfway point. So we want to avoid the half halfway point on our composition if we're doing anything where we're creating a painting and we're saying let's not divide our paper in half with our composition. Let's avoid the half and half trap. So to avoid that half and half trap always remember try to keep either your horizon line, your mountain range, whatever it is you're doing, try to keep it above the halfway point or below it. So if we were to spin the paper over this way and say, okay, let's avoid the half and half trap over here. Let's take another look at it here and say, where's the halfway point? Well, that's kind of easy. That's the halfway point right here. Let's avoid that halfway point and go lower. So then let's go lower. So we would make our mountains maybe here and make a larger sky. So in essence, avoiding, let's just make this note to ourselves, just a mental note, we're, right? We're, can you follow me here? <laughs> You're following me here, right? Just recall, avoiding the half and half trap, which is basically just dividing your 
rectangle that you're working within, whether it's vertical or horizontal, your picture space, your rectangle that you're working within, avoid the half and half trap and that is basically just a good solid fu fundament. I've heard, I've seen critics, I have my paintings in galleries and I was walking around in galleries with my paintings on the wall and I was watching professional people that were like high level um, art critics and art purchasers that were purchasing art and they were walking around and I could hear them talking and I heard a couple times clear as a clear as a bell I was sitting there just kind of observing walking around I was wondering if they were going to watch walk by my painting and look at my painting but I heard them say on a few occasions here and there as they were looking at paintings and they would say "Ooh, wow if they had just put that put those mountains a little higher in that painting it would look a lot better or oh, if they had just left that horizon line a little lower in the painting that would have looked so much better so I've heard that from professional art critics and people that are purchasing art at a high level again so I'm not trying to I just want to mention this that avoiding the half half and half trap is going to be a big help to you when you're doing your paintings just remember try to avoid dividing your your rectangle in half so you know make your mountains lower or a little higher like over here or your bridge or whatever it is you're drawing or your mountains keep them either higher or lower than the halfway point on your painting and that's all that is and I always call this the avoiding the half and half trap which is please 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 try to avoid dividing your paper your painting in half when you're doing a composition where you're making a real distinctive line across your painting and creating a half and half section it's always better to keep things, you know, divided less than halfway on your painting. So if you have a mountain range, keep your mountain range low, below the halfway point. Your, you know, your, your halfway point is here. Half is half the, the canvas or half the watercolor paper. Keep your horizon line and your mountain range below the half point or keep your mountain range above the ha halfway point up here have a small sky or have a large sky but try to avoid that making a, a mountain range or sea you know maybe the sea or the ocean whatever it is you're painting that really is unpleasant and a lot of you know great people in art that purchase art at a high level that are out there they're judging artwork in galleries and in competitions they will always tell you to avoid that halfway point on your canvas on your on your watercolor paper the halfway point the half and half trap that's called the avoiding the half and half trap I want to just make it clear so everybody knows try to avoid it I do it myself once in a while by accident but you don't do what I do sometimes all right always remember try to avoid that half and half trap so we're gonna do that right now so we're gonna make our bridge our concrete and stone bridge we're gonna make it Here's the halfway point. We could even say, hey, let's take a ruler. We have our ruler here. We say, all right, here's our ruler. Our canvas is our rectangle. Our watercolor paper is 10 inches high here. So the halfway point is 5 inches. So we make a mark there, 5 inches. Five, that's the <clears throat> halfway point, center point. That's the halfway point on our canvas. So we know right away... We don't want to make anything really of consequence along that halfway point. We want to keep it either above that or below that a little bit. All you have to do is just keep it right away from that halfway point. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make our bridge a little higher than that halfway point. All we got to do is make it a little bit, a little bit higher. And there we're going to go like this. And woo! Whew, look at that. And there we did, we avoided the half and half trap right away. Perfect, look at that. So, I always like to mention these things, these techniques and these methods and these uh, important uh, considerations when you're doing your artwork. You definitely want to kind of keep those in mind. Now, since we have our arched bridge across here like so, we made that soft kind of arch 
across there. Let me see if I can. That's as that's the low. Uh, wow, that's as low as the lights can go. All right, so here we go. I'm going to make it a little darker so you can see it. Okay, that's the arched bridge. Then below that, we're going to have the grass and the bottom of the bridge here. And that's below the center point. And then we just do a light line across, barely visible, just so you can see it. At home where you're working, your studio, your living room, your kitchen table, however you like to work. We're just kind of getting some sketch lines in here. Okay, so we have the top of the bridge across here, and you saw the finished painting. We have the water line, let's say, where the water is, the level line of the water. And then we're going to do some uh, arches here. So let's create some arch arches like this. And then let's make them smaller as they go, like that, like this. There we go. So we make these a little bit larger over here, and then the arches get a little smaller as they go this way into the distance. So the bridge is kind of going to feel like it's going off in the distance a little bit this way on a little bit of an angle. And we can get that angle if we want a little bit. We can erase, make this a little bit larger down here, and kind of make it like an angle across this way, like so. So you can adjust things as you go. Does that make sense? You're the artist. As you go, you can kind of like look and rethink things and say, oh, well, how can I make this look a little bit more like it's going off in the distance a little bit here this way, like that way, kind of on an angle. And the way we would do that is just we angle this line here a little bit this way, like this. Or if we take our ruler, you can use your ruler to kind of feel things out and say, okay, there we go. It's, it's not quite level. That would be level. This is, it's a little bit this way, a little bit of an angle this way. So we have a little bit of a feeling of things are getting smaller. The arches here on the bridge are getting smaller as they go in the distance and we make them smaller as we go. We make these half moons smaller as they go, the arches. Now, what we'll do is we'll um, create some bushes and some shoreline over here. Then we're going to make the reflections underneath. And then here we're going to make some reflections, like so. And these are the reflections of the arches in the bridge, like this. And we're just going to, this is going to be water and reflections of the bridge, like that. Then, we're going to create some trees over here. This, this is going to be above the bridge, some trees up here, like that. Over here, and there's some land over here in the background. So we have a little bit of some trees over here. And then over here, let's do a little more. Let's do a little bit of a hill, and maybe some more trees over here too. Just a little bit of some croppings of trees. And maybe there's a little bit of a reflection in the water of some of these trees. And there's a little bit of a reflection over here. Of those trees up here, they're going to reflect down into the water. The water is kind of like a mirror. So you can imagine it anything above the... So if this is your level line of your water, anything above here is going to reflect down under here. And then down onto the water. Just like that. Alright, so I think we have it. We have the sketch completed. What I'll do is I'll do a little darker sketch over the top of this preliminary sketch, but I want to take a break first because we've been working quite a bit, and we did talk about the half and half trap, uh, you know, at nauseum. So let's not keep talking about that. Let's keep moving on here. But the thing is, I did a light sketch first. I don't want to go with an incredibly dark preliminary sketch. If I if, if the main thing is if we do a preliminary light sketch first of our subject matter, like we just did here and we make it a light sketch, you can always go in with an eraser and erase a little bit here and there to adjust a few things if you think some things don't look as good as you need it to or you have to adjust. So we don't want to make a dark 
line or dark lines and dark drawings to start with. We do that first preliminary sketch where we just get things approximately where we need them. Now, in just a few minutes, when we take a break, I'll come back and I'll do a darker drawing, darker sketch, darker contour drawing over the top of this, just so you can see the drawing in its real uh, strong essence of what it's going to look like and then we can work from there and do our painting over top. So thanks again for uh, coming by and working with me here. We're working together to get better at our artwork. Um, I always mention if you want to subscribe on the right hand side below here there's the subscribe button. All that does is just alert you when new videos come out that I've created and I'm always making videos every week month after month and year after year. I'm here always for you to create videos for you and tutorials so that you can learn watercolor, learn how to draw, sketch, lay out your designs of your paintings, and then learn how to get the watercolor uh, paintings and the beautiful washes on your watercolor paper just right so that you're happy and you're creating beautiful paintings the way you want to. And I know many of you are really doing a great job and are having a lot of success. You send me your paintings on emails. I see them and I say, oh my God, everyone is doing a great job. So. Great job out there. You guys are doing a phenomenal um, job, and you're doing great work with your watercolors. So we're just having fun together. We're going to create another idea here of a beautiful bridge, some water, some mountains in the background. I didn't do those yet. Let's kind of sketch those in. Let's just do some mountains here in the back. And there we go. We just did a mountain range in, in about five seconds. So, again, we're having fun. We're not stressing. We're just having a good, good time here doing our watercolors. And uh, we'll be right back. And um, we'll start with doing a darker draw drawing over this drawing, the preliminary sketch, which is the super light drawing first, the darker drawing over the top, the final drawing, and then the watercolor painting over top. So we always follow that same procedure. Super light sketch first, go in, do the darker drawing on top of the light sketch, and then we do the painting, okay? So we're covering all the whole enchilada here, chock full of nuts, chock full of information. So I'm just happy that you're here, and we're going to get everything going in just a second or two with the darker drawing, so you'll see the lines a lot better, and then the watercolor painting. Okay, we'll be right back. I just got to take a break. All right, we're starting back up again here, and again, I promised you that I would um, do a little darker drawing over the top of this preliminary sketch. And I always mention, again, just to reiterate this, preliminary sketches, you should do them very, very light to try to just kind of lay out your basic design of your painting very, very lightly with barely a visible sketch with your pencil. I usually go a little darker with my preliminary sketch on my video so you can kind of see what I'm doing, I guess, generally. Um, or see sort of what I'm doing. And uh, the reason why is because if you need to make an adjustment, you just use your eraser and you can adjust things here and there. If you need to make the bridge a little higher, a little lower, if you want to make your mountain range a little different, the shape, you can erase a little bit and, you know, you can do a little bit of corrections with your uh, kneaded eraser and your pencil work first with the light, super light preliminary sketch. Then when you're done with that, then you could just paint over the top of that, that's fine, but I always go with a darker drawing over the top so because so on video here you can see what I'm actually drawing and that everything is where it should be, okay? So that's all I do. So now I'm going to go with a, uh, an HB lead pencil and I'm just going to kind of do it a, a darker, darker line so you can kind of see and then I'm going to do the arched bridge here with the arches and then the arches get a little smaller as they go across here, like so. And then there's going to be some reflections of the trees up here. Let's do the trees. So the trees up here are like so. Then there's a beautiful mountain range over here in the distance, in the distance, the far distance over here. It gives you that feeling of, woo, wow, back a quarter mile, five miles back, far away. In the distance, you have a gorgeous mountain range back here. and then. Maybe over here you have some trees. You have some trees that are kind of closer, only maybe a quarter mile away or eighth of a mile away, and those are kind of darker and 
This is more misty and lighter in color, the mountain range in the back. So we're going to cover all that as we paint, but I just want to mention it now. So you kind of have the a little bit of the ideas that I'm thinking of as I'm going forward here, as I go. So now again, I'm trying to get some of these trees, the reflections of these trees in the water. This is going to be all water here in the bottom third of the painting. And there's some... So I'm just doing some lines just to kind of keep keep things looking good. And then here we'll have some more trees reflecting down over here in the water. So if the trees are up here, the trees are up here, and this is about the height of the trees. This My pencil here is about the height of the trees. If you just take your pencil and just turn it around and go down the other way, there you go. That's what should be reflecting down here. The, uh, it's an even amount. So if you have your water line here, we have our water line here across. Your trees are about a pencil length up above the water line, and then you just take your pencil and switch it around and go down this way. That's where the reflection should be in your water, because remember this is all going to be water here. So that's where your ref reflection should be for your trees in your water. And that's really as simple as that. Same thing here. You could say, all right, above here, there's the water line here. Here's my pencil. It's about the height of the trees, the pencil. And then if you just take the pencil and you just spin it around or just, you know, take it and pivot it down here like so on the water line. And then you can see that I have my pencil lines right down here where those trees are going to reflect down into the water. So that looks like everything's in the right place. You can kind of see everything looks just about right. And then now the beautiful colors of watercolor and the washes and the water, everything's going to just make this look incredibly beautiful. So we're going to get our washes prepped. Let's get our paints mixed first over here. Always a great plan to have with watercolor, of course, and this is the Extreme Beginner series. I always mention in the Extreme Beginner series, it's going to help you tremendously if you can mix your colors first on your palette. Take all your colors and figure out what the mixes are you're going to use for your painting, and then get them over here in your palette. And then you can just go in and just start painting, and you're not worrying about trying to figure out what colors you're going to mix. You have them already in your palette ready to go. So let's keep with that idea. So, this is a painting. It's a landscape with some water. So, um, the first thing, let's do our greens. Let's get some greens here. So we have some sap green, which I call this sap green. This is more like a leaf green, kind of a lighter green. A little bit of a burnt umber kind of feel, which gives us a little bit of a olivey kind of green after we mix all that in together. So we're going to want to keep these colors a little bit, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, let's get let's keep these colors a little bit muted, um, a little bit dulled down with a little bit of brown in there. I call this my burnt umber. So I take my greens and then mix in some burnt umber with my greens, and that gives me like an olivey green. That looks really beautiful, nice olivey green. Then maybe like we could make another variation of green. Let's take some uh, cadmium lemon yellow, which kind of this looks like a cadmium lemon yellow, which is a very, very cool yellow. Let's get some of that in here over this way, down in this one, this well. Okay, and um, like that. And let's add a little orange to it. And we have a nice orangey uh, green. Kind of a golden green with like some orange in there. That looks pretty good. So we have our olivey green here by using our, our, two, our two greens and a little bit of burnt umber, mix it around, a little bit of a kind of a yellow ochre gold color with some orange and yellow. And then uh, again we're just prepping our palette here, putting in our colors we're going to need to do this painting. And then uh, what what else? We're going to need some purple for those mountains. So we have purple for the mountains, the distant mountain, that big distant mountain range over here. And let's add some 
burnt umber or brown to that to gray down that purple just a little bit. We don't want to make it too incredibly uh, vibrant. We want to mellow it out a little bit. Let's add some of that burnt umber to it. And then we have a little bit of that purple and burnt umber there to give it a mellow purple. And I think we have a lot of our colors really set up beautifully. And then let's do a little orange for the water and some blue. And this is kind of like a cerulean blue. So that'll be for our water. Some cadmium orange and some cerulean blue up here for the water. Okay, let's see how this works. I think it's going to work out beautifully. And then we'll do the sky the same thing, some purple. Now, what I forgot to mention is we're going to use the glazing technique here in this painting. So for the glazing technique, Apologies for that delay. I'm just trying to find my brushes and I did find my brush here. This is my um, Da Vinci flat brush or square brush. I like to use that for large washes on a painting like this. So what we want to do is with this painting we want to add a glazing. We want to do this in the glazing method. So again we're doing extreme beginners and as an extreme beginner painter you realize that we use the glazing technique often not always, but we use it often, and that's basically just getting a whole beautiful wash on the whole watercolor paper first, let it dry, and then come back and do the darker washes over top. So let's do that. Let's grab our water. I'm going to change my water out. My water didn't look as clear as it should, so I'm going to just start out with fresh, clean water. And let's, before we do anything, let's wet the paper a little bit. So let, put some water on the paper like that. Just fresh clean water and just kind of splash it across the whole paper right on down across the whole paper but not everywhere. Just put it in spots here and there and you can kind of take your wash and spread it all around as you go when you're doing this method of the glazing technique but the idea is to get some fresh clean water on here and get a nice even wash of color across the whole painting and that's what we're going to do right now. So right now we're going to take some purple and start getting some purple up here in the sky and just see how I let it flow on down like this like that. Just let the water color do its thing. Some orange here too so orange and purple for the sky colors and then across the bridge over here some purple don't even worry about it. You don't even care where that paint's going. You're just getting a nice, beautiful wash of color across that whole painting. Splash it. Have a good time. And then we're going to let this just mellow out with some a little more orange here. Let's get some more orange. So I just mix up a little more orange. If I ran out of orange, I add just a little bit of water and some orange paint there, like that. And I'm going to add some more orange to my to the bottom of my water area where my water is down here. Okay. And I've wet pretty much 90% of the paper, 75% oh, of the paper, just like this. You could take a little more darker purple and add a little more purple up top fast maybe a little bit of blue too. Add a little bit of blue in up top just to give it a little darker wash up top like that. Like that. And that's it. Then what I do next is I take a paper towel or a uh, tissue and I come down to the bottom of the painting and I just mop up all the water that is accumulating on the bottom of the paper. You, you'll have that when you do some beautiful washes with lots of water, you're going to have puddles start to form. So all you do is you just go along the bottom of your paper and just mop up those little bit of puddles so they don't cause a problem 
later. It'll dry a little bit better if you kind of mop up the puddles, just like that. Like this, and you can even go around the top. You can go around the border of the tape. You can go around the border of the tape of the painting, just to pick up any maybe um, puddles of water. And then I'm just going to take the brush and just lightly feather that down in there like that. And then one more time, go across the bottom, pick up any puddles like that, and that's it. Now this is the point in the painting. You let this dry 100%. You can use a blow dryer at this point to dry this all so you can go back in and work maybe five or ten minutes later, or you can let it dry for like two hours until your paper kind of flattens back out again because right now it's buckled. We use a lot of water. But that's the beauty of the glazing technique. You're using beautiful washes, lots of water, lots of beautiful color, and going all the way across the whole paper. That's the only challenge and difficulty of doing this type of glazing technique is you have to let it dry 100%. You wouldn't want to go back now and do any painting until this dries 100%. So, like I said, perfect time. Grab a blow dryer, dry this all off, make it 100% dry or wait two or three hours until it really dries quite a bit, like where it's almost 100% dry, and you'll be all set. But that's a real critical thing. I hope you understand that. Does that make sense? This wash, after you do this beautiful, beautiful coloration of your watercolor paper, you have to let it dry 100% now before you do any more work to it. You have to let it dry. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to take a break. We'll let this dry 100%. And then we'll come back and start doing the uh, darker tonal values, the darker washes over the top of this light, beautiful light wash of some purples and blues for the sky and oranges. And we just took that same color scheme and just worked it right down into the water over here. So you'll see that we're going to just have a great time doing our darker washes over top. And that'll be our painting, basically. It's going to go fast. It's going to be easy. You're going to see how much fun you have doing this painting and how great it's going to look when you're done. So, but the key is right now, after this first wash you do, please, please, please let it dry 100%, okay? So I'm going to go grab a cup of coffee and I'll be back in a few minutes. I might use the blow dryer to speed up the time here, but uh, if not, I'll take a couple hours and maybe have a meal, like a dinner or a lunch, and then I can come back and see how it looks if I need to add the blow dryer to it a little bit. To finish the drying process, I can do that. Okay? All right, so I'll be right back. All right, so we are back, and we are actually starting up again here. We let our paper dry 100%, so I went out and I had some dinner, and I'm coming back now after some dinner, and this is perfect. It's dry. The paper is completely dry. It's pretty much back to its normal condition where it's kind of flat, pretty much. I noticed my tape might have peeled up a little bit here and there, but for the most part, it's perfect. It's ready to go. I just did notice one thing that I forgot to put in the lines of the shadows of the underside of the bridge. So there's actually a shadow underneath the bridge, and it, it kind of starts about here, and it it com comes across here like this, and it comes down like this. And it goes like that. And the same for this. And then it sort of angles like this a little bit. And the same over here. Sort of angles. And this over here is more like that. So what happens is over here it actually it angles a little bit more. So this here is, you can kind of see it's a little bit, there's going to be more light in here and then more sh like shadow over here. Then as it goes across this way, actually we see a little more shadow here. And it's okay to shadow in areas with your pencil because you're going to paint over that with really dark paint so it won't matter. And by the time we get over here, you can kind of see there's just a little bit of light and there's mostly shadow. And then we're going to want to capture that shadow in the water. So I'm going to do a little bit of reflections. Like that. 
So that's where shading is important. You'll see some of my recent videos where we're doing drawing and we do drawing and shading. And a lot of times what we do is we use our, um, just a regular pencil and then we use a uh, pen. So we use a pen, we use a pen drawing and then we use a china marker to do our shading and then we're using our pencil, like a retractable pencil, to do our preliminary sketch like we did here. So we're kind of doing the same thing. We're doing a preliminary sketch, light first, to get everything where we want it. Now we're going over with a, a, a darker pencil line. As you can see, we did the darker pencil line. And now we're doing shading. So we're trying to shade those areas as we see them to make sure that we have everything looking good. And there's some shading like this. So we're going to make sure that we do our shading correctly, like that, in the water. So we have water here. This is our water line here. And then even for our water line, we might want to make sure that we leave it kind of clear. We don't want to have any pencil lines in our water coming through. So that's why I'm going to erase a little bit there. But as you can see now, we have our darker contour drawing or darker sketch lines and now we're all set we have a, everything 100% in shadowing in for our darks we have our uh, mountain mountain a little bit of mountain there in the shadowing and we have some of that too over here we have some of these trees shadowing over there so we should have a, a wonderful time now painting because we have everything worked out with our pencil and our shadowing in our, with our pencil. All right, so now we're going to start up. We'll make some, we'll mix up some more paint. We're going to take uh, what we have here, which is our olive green, basically, which was burnt umber and our two greens, our light green and our dark green. I call that sap green here and then like leaf green here. A little bit of burnt umber there. I call that burnt umber. So that's our green mix. And then um, we have our orange mix here. Let's add some burnt umber to our orange mix and some purple. We're going to make a uh, kind of like a stone color. So some purple, some blue. How does that look for our stone? Mm, too much coolness. So we'll do more brown there. I think that'll be good. Sort of like a brown with a little bit of cool colors, a little bit of blue and purple in there. That'll be our bridge color. And then our and we have some grayish color up here. We'll mix more colors as we need, but I think we have plenty of green brown, light green, dark green, brown. That's going to be our main mix. So let's get a lot of that in there. Let's mix up a lot of that green and brown. That's going to be our like staple green for the trees, for the trees. And then the mountains are going to be more purpley. So we're going to have our purple color over here. Let's get our purple color over here. Let's mix up some plenty of purple for the mountains in the distance here with a little bit of brown so purple and brown like that purple and brown touch of green in there too mix in a little bit of green and I think we have it so we've mixed a lot of colors and I think we have the colors that we need we have the purplish mountain colors here we have our lots of lots of green with brown greens and the brown for the trees and then we're going to do those trees, we're going to put those into the water. We're going to do the mirroring effect where we mirror down the trees, mirror that down into the water over here, over here, and over here. And then we're going to need some really, really good darks for underneath the bridge there. So we'll uh, work maybe those darks up here. We'll get a little bit of black, a little bit of black in there, brown, greens. So we'll kind of make a mixture of greens and brown, same as this here greens and browns and then we'll introduce some black to get it even darker and I think that looks good yeah that's gonna look just perfect okay so then 
let's get started with our maybe some trees over here. Like that, some trees. And if you have to mix up a little more darker tree mix here to get some thicker paint, you know, sometimes you need a little thicker paint like that. So don't be afraid if you need thicker paint to get in some more straight paint, no water. Just get in there with your brush and your paint and don't worry about any water. Don't get any water in that. There you go, see? Like that. Then um, we're going to do the bridge. Let's just kind of neaten that up a little bit. Like that. And more tree colors over here. Like that. Wow, look at that. Beautiful. And uh, I'm using a flat brush that looks like about a, a half inch and that's the uh, Princeton Art Brush, Art and Brush Company, 5 eighths, 5 eighths wash brush, flat brush. So again I'm using, the set comes with like five brushes I think, so we have the Princeton Art and Brush Company, they, you can buy a set of like five brushes, you have a couple, you have a couple round brushes, you have a couple uh, flat brushes like this and that's pretty much you can do a lot with this so you can kind of see here that I'm getting a lot done with this flat brush right and we just do some dark darks here by the bridge like that then we're gonna take that and right away Let's go down here and do the, the mirror image of that. Except here, you don't want to do everything. You want to leave white spaces there because this is water. So water is kind of choppy. You don't always see every little bit of reflection like that. Then we get some darks like this and we go like that. And So now we're going to start working our darks underneath here. Like that. Perfect, look at that. Ah, oh, that looks good. Look at how good that looks. And you just kind of see how I'm doing these kind of quick brush strokes there. Look at that. Don't fuss around too much and, and get too worried about things. Just get those darks in there. Again, we're using the brown and greens with a little bit of black in here to get these really dark darks under the bridge. This is underneath the bridge where the arches are, like that. Then as you come down into the water, then you don't want to have it too solid. You want to kind of make some water, kind of feeling of water with some breaks in there, like so. You can kind of see how I'm breaking up the the uh, lines there. And then the same thing, let's get in here and do this. And then we do that. See how that works? Once you hit the water area, where the water is, it's more um, choppy. The water's choppy. You see a lot more, you see more lines and stuff. So you could actually take your fingernail and scratch some lines in there to create that water effect. And that's all that it is. And I'm going to go do the same thing up here and now Lots of darks here. You want to have this really, really dark underneath the bridges here, these arches. And we're doing the same thing here. And then we get some greens. Here too. We'll get some greens going. 
And then over here, obviously, we have greens because you have these trees up here. So let's do those. So I pick up my greens here, like so. A little bit of darks in there too, why not? Add some darks in there, that, those always look good. A couple darks here and there. Look how beautiful that looks. That I'm going to bring these forward. These are the, the bridge here. And then this is the bridge color. Let's get that in, that brownish stone color. Ooh, look how good that looks. Let's just get that in there too. We're working quick here, right? We're not uh, fussing around too much. So we have some stone looking color, like that brown stone look. You ever see those beautiful brownstone buildings in New York and any major city, you'll usually have beautiful brownstone buildings. And uh, so that's kind of what the mix we made here was like a, a brownstone kind of color with brown, a little bit of orange, and uh, maybe a little bit of uh, purple we put in there. And uh, you can kind of see how good that looks. Just like that. So there we have it. Beautiful brown stone bridge. Now, purple. We made that purple mix too, right? Remember we mixed all this stuff ahead of time. So when we're painting now, we don't have to worry. We have everything mixed. Does that make sense? If you mix all your colors first over here, you are 100% better off doing that than trying to mix as you go. So get all your colors mixed in like we did in the beginning. If you have to go back to the beginning and kind of do it over again, don't worry about it. Mix plenty of water and paint over here in your palette first so that you have your composition mixed correctly. And I add a little bit of green to the Purple Mountains just here and there to make sure that we uh, harmonize the colors. Maybe just making a purple mountain here without any mixture of some greens in there might look a little bit odd and not harmonious with the rest of the painting. So that's why I take some of that purple and then I take some purple too and mix it into the greens here too a little bit if you have time to do it. And if the wash is correct. But I can kind of see that we have time to do it. And then we don't make this so here on the bridge we leave some whites along the top of the bridge for a highlight, but not everywhere. You see how I kind of do it here and there? That looks much better. If you kind of skip a few spots where the highlight is across the bridge. And you can even add a little bit of a dark along here. Right along that edge where the bridge is, like that. Does that not look fantastic? We are almost complete now. I think we almost have the painting completed. So I will take some greens and just splash a couple spots there. A couple spots in the water. And uh, what else can we do here? Um, I would say if we just add a couple lines in the water, like so. I think with a little dark darks too. Let's get some of that dark darks there mixed with the green. And if you can get a couple of those very faint, like that, a couple of those in there. Not everywhere, just a couple spots. Maybe a couple of, a couple of, uh, Like that. 
and then splash on a little bit of water. Just some water out of the water bucket like that. And if you think you've splashed too much water on there, you can always lift up with a little bit of paper towel or tissue and do a couple of crosses like this. Go right across with your brush, like that. Blot up, blot up a couple spots. And that's it everybody, you have a finished painting. It looks absolutely fantastic. We have completed a beautiful bridge painting along a river. Um, I, I think we really have captured a perfect atmosphere here of the beautiful sky, the distant mountains, the purplish blue with some greens mixed in there, mountains, a gorgeous stone, brownstone bridge. If we have to add a little bit of brush strokes here to kind of smooth out our bridge wash, we do that. We just kind of smooth it out. If you see anything kind of looking funny, and then we move some of that brown, brown color down into the water too. We need that. I think we need that to bring that brownstone color down into the water a little bit, like so. And that's really it. Um, I don't think, of, you know, if you want to put a boat in here with a fisherman or two or something like that, feel free, do something like that if you like. Um, or maybe a couple fishermen up here on the bridge fishing down. They may be fishing on top of the bridge here trying to catch some fish along the bottom of the, the bridge here. Fish like to go along the bottom of the bridges because that's where the deepest water is along the bridges where they put those really, really deep footings down below the bridge here underneath the water. So there's some very, very deep pools of water along the bridge here. And that means that your fishermen would like to fish over here because they can, that's where the fish hang out where it's nice and cool. Those are the cool catfish that are hanging out and doing some chilling out in the water where it's cool. And then some of us are gonna be out there fishing, trying to catch a few catfish for some dinner. And uh, this is a fun painting. I hope you had a great time. And I always mention, if you haven't subscribed, right on the right-hand side down here below, there's the subscribe button. You can subscribe this way. You'll be seeing my videos, upcoming videos in your YouTube channel. When you open up YouTube, you'll see my video right there at the top of your list of videos. And this way you can jump in and watch, and if you want to grab your brushes and pencils and paints and paint along with me uh, on the next video, great. If you want to skip one, if you don't like the subject matter, maybe I'm doing something on the next video you're, you don't really like so much. Maybe I'm doing flowers and you don't, you'd rather paint like stuff like this, like landscapes or cityscapes or whatever. doesn't matter. You can just uh, subscribe uh, and then, uh, you know. Pick and choose what paintings you want to do, or you may you may want to watch all of them because you'll always learn more information as you watch each video. But in any case, have fun with it. We're doing an extreme beginners uh, series all the time here, and that's what what we're doing here. We're using our um, Prang Oval 16 palette, which is inexpensive, maybe ten fifteen dollars. You can get that for. We're using our um, Princeton Art and Brush Company. Uh, five pack of brushes. There's a few more brushes that come with this so you can get like a f five pack of brushes for like ten dollars uh, The Prang Oval 16 set it looks like this. Let me see if I have it in over here And where is it? There it is The Prang Oval 16 set looks like that um, You can get this on Amazon on any place online or in any art and hobby store usually has these they carry these these are very popular so you have these, you have your brushes, you have also a brush that comes with your Oval 16, your Prang Oval 16 set comes with a brush, a beautiful round brush. So you might be able to do some smaller paintings first with this Prang Oval 16 brush that comes with the, with the kit here. But then once you start doing larger paintings like this, we're doing like a 9 by 12 here or a 9 by 14, then you need to use some of these larger brushes. And these are great synthetic brushes by, again, the Princeton Art and Brush Company that you can get this on Amazon, online, hobby stores have them. Five pack for like, you know, five, six dollars. Great bargain. 
and you can see how you can create some gorgeous paintings with simple art supplies and then we just have some paper here this happens to be uh, Fabriano studio watercolor that looks like this so you can buy this if you want if you don't want to spend the money on a really really fancy watercolor paper you can get other inexpensive papers that are a little less uh, costly but this Fabriano studio watercolor paper is really great I mean if you can spend it and 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 you know kind of make the investment and get some good paper your paintings will go much better because paper is like critical if you have really lousy paper your paintings are going to look not not so good but if you can get some paper like this which is an average paper it's actually better than average it's above average it's like a really excellent um student paper or even a professional paper professionals would would choose to use a paper like this that's how good it is but it's less expensive than the regular Fabriano paper that you would kind of find in art stores and online. So just a tidbit of information with your paper. Paper makes a huge difference on how your paintings will handle when you're putting paint and water on there. So thanks again for coming by. I had such a fun time here with you doing this painting and again it was really just a beautiful time of really going over the basics. We'll cover that again in the beginning of the video because we're going to actually cover at the very very start of the video I will kind of recap how we did everything and how we get to this conclusion of a beautiful painting like this okay so we will see you on the next video and uh, happy painting everybody enjoy the watercolor journey it's a fun journey all it is is a little bit of 15 10 15 minutes every day of working at your paintings your drawings and your paintings and you will get there you will be creating beautiful paintings before you know it okay see you on the next video bye bye